Brothers and sisters, tonight we begin the Easter Triduum, which has a wonderful ending as we know. But we follow the story. Tonight, we begin it with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Jesus does three, t three things tonight. He institutes the Eucharist, that great sacrament of charity. He also institutes the sacred priesthood, the holy ministerial priesthood, which is intrinsically or interiorly tied to the Eucharist. And then he also calls us to love one another, that fraternal charity. Washing of the feet is that sign. I remember a few years back, it was 2014, I was at a Benedictine monastery. You might have heard this story before, but I remember this 60-some-year-old abbot. He had knee problems, and he got down and washed the feet of his fellow brother monks, and it was laborious. It was hard for him to get down and get back up, move to the next person, but he did it without wincing, without anything. You could see that he knew what he was doing. I am washing the feet of my brothers. And just like any family, it's hard to get along all the time with the, our families. Our families, there's no getting around them. We love them. We get frustrated with them. We, and then we try to love them again. It's the reality of family. And as the people of God, as fellow Catholics, we actually are brothers and sisters. The priest says it at several times in the Mass, and it really is a family relationship. With this reality, we know that fraternal charity, or love of each other, is not easy. And especially when it comes to feet, <laughs> if you want to wash the feet of your family members, you can. Even after a mani-pedi, they're still not that pleasant, it seems, but this is a beautiful sign then. We see the saints taking care of people who are dying in gutters and all these things. It's heroic charity. God calls us to do this. He gives us also the means to do it. He doesn't just tell us, you know, wash each other's feet, take care of each other, show charity to each other, and then he leaves. He gives us the means to do it. He doesn't just issue commands. So he institutes the priesthood. He did this when he said the words, do this in memory of me do this. He was commanding them to do this, these sacraments. This great sacrament of holy orders then is given also so that our sins committed after baptism may be forgiven throughout the ages. He celebrates the other sacraments as well, and priests are allowed to be the instruments through which God continually forgives sins. If we're not forgiven, we cannot grow in love, even in a family Forgiveness strengthens love if it's been genuine. To the extent, though, that we remain in our sins, we fall away from love over time. Forgiveness is that first step in greater love. We also need strength, though, and support. Another gift from the Lord that he gives us then for that is the Eucharist, which his priests celebrate day after day. Do this in memory of me following his words, being faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. That moment is the moment this heavenly feast for his followers began. That's when the institution of the Eucharist happened. He confides himself to us under the ordinary appearances of bread and wine, but he is truly substantially present there. The Protestant Reformation said, God can't do that. He can't be under those appearances. Hmm. Oh, yes, he can. And yes, he is. He is here with us, and that he will be there until the end of the age he promised us. And in the Eucharist, the fulfillment of that promise, he is under those appearances. It takes the eyes of faith to see that, though. And when we see it, when the Lord gives us that great grace to realize he's under there, He's hidden under those appearances. We'll begin to see the logic of his work in the rest of our life. We'll see him under ordinary appearances out and about. We'll see him speaking to us and his presence strengthening us in hard moments. After the Last Supper, which was the first Mass, Jesus and his apostles then made a short journey across the Kidron Valley, going through there and into the garden. 
where he asked them to pray while he experienced his agony. It's interesting that Jesus does not hide his weakness. As he gets closer to his passion, you'll notice he gets weaker. He shows his weakness more. He cries at the tomb of Lazarus. He then asks his apostles, why, why are you sleeping? Could you not be with me one hour? I need you. He's showing his weakness. But he did not fear the chaos of that night. He plunged into the depths of death. And then the church, which he also began, is the rampart in the open city with walls of faith and the love of Jesus Christ present in the world. Faith means going out with Jesus then, not being afraid of even allowing weakness to be in us, that we turn it over to him before it becomes sin. We must emerge and dare to follow Christ. We will process in the church the end of this liturgy with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, to the garden, to an altar of repose, which is the symbol of that garden where it was foggy, it was cold, but he went there with a mission. And there we can stay with him, to be with him in his loneliness, his mortal anguish. The liturgy then ends in silence, it's kind of a sobering thing. But we Catholics are not afraid of doing these kinds of things. It will not break our spirits, although there's an interior fear of that, but it will not. If we're with Jesus in that, we'll experience what he experienced and then we'll see his love there. If we don't do these things, we won't realize the depths of his love, that he allowed himself to experience these things. And then we can spend some time there with him in the Blessed Sacrament this night. It'll be open all until midnight. We are there with Jesus in the garden to keep watch and pray as he goes through his agony. And most of our parish churches will be open as well. So if you're traveling to other towns, you can find him there as well. It was nearly midnight then when Jesus was betrayed by Judas, was arrested, and then was taken to the house of the high priest. This night, we begin to renew our origins, which at this time in history, we need more than ever, as we know, as today is all we have, to renew our origins will be to strengthen and fortify our identity as Catholics, as believers in Jesus Christ. These days will, if we let them, renew us in our mind and heart as true followers of Jesus, his devoted disciples. Let us keep watch and pray.